Hi, my name is Dr. Ken Tyndall and I am the CTO of Canis Labs. Uh, I'm here today to give an overview of the CAN Pico board that connects a Raspberry Pi Pico to CAN bus. So here is the board and I'll just give a quick overview of the uh, functions of the board. This here is the uh, CAN controller and the CAN transceiver. Uh, and then uh, we have a couple of uh, jumper pins here. This one is to disable uh, transmit. So when this is not closed, uh, this board cannot uh, transmit on the CAN bus, which is uh, useful in case we don't want to screw up a CAN bus that we're trying to monitor by some software that's gone crazy. Uh, this is a jumper um, to add in a termination resistor, the 120 ohm termination resistor that's standard on CAN bus in case we're working on a bus that we haven't got termination for. This is the... Uh, screw terminal that connects up to the CAN bus, uh, the CAN high, CAN low, and there's an extra signal in the middle for uh, grounding uh, to the target ground. Uh, and then down here we have the uh, instrument header. So a ground, uh, a trigger pin that we can use um, in software on the um, Raspberry Pi Pico to drive a pulse on that to trigger instruments when something interesting has happened. We have the two digital lines, RX and TX from the CAN transceiver, and we have the analog CAN high and CAN low lines. So here we would put an oscilloscope, and on these we would put a logic analyzer. Right, I'm going to now show you how to uh, actually uh, install a Raspberry Pi Pico on the Pico board. So this is a uh, jig made from some breadboard and some header, uh, and it's quite simple. Uh, the header pins here in red, I've removed all the header pins that are connected to uh, the CAN Pico board. Uh, so all the other pins are there just to hold the, uh, uh, the Raspberry Pi Pico in place. And I've put some markers here in yellow so we know where to solder. So if we drop the CAN Pico uh, down on top of the jig, uh, then the Raspberry Pi Pico goes down here. So then we just run solder into the half moon uh, pins on the Raspberry Pi Pico and then we've soldered it down. So here's a couple of uh, boards I've uh, put together and soldered down uh, the Raspberry Pi Pico's on some assembled it and here is a little tiny maybe not the world's shortest but a very short piece of uh, twisted pair CAN bus that connects them up. I haven't connected up the grounds here because the USB uh, power for both of these comes out of the same hub, so they have a common ground reference already. And you can see uh, the jumpers are in place, so this terminates the bus at either end. And uh, both boards are allowed to transmit. Uh, so we have the transmit uh, um, interlock pin uh, jumper enabled here. So let's have a look at the software side of things. Both of these boards have had firmware um, put onto them, which is a MicroPython uh, firmware that's uh, available uh, from our GitHub uh, repository. And uh, that provides a, a CAN interface uh, to these uh, uh, to the CAN Pico board. Um, and one of the easiest ways to drive uh, MicroPython uh, is from the uh, Tony um, IDE. Uh, there's just a few things when installing Tony you have to, to be aware of. Firstly, uh, it needs to end have the, uh, the back-end drivers for uh, the Pico installed. Um, but if we also open the options out here, another one of these is uh, by default, uh, depending on the version installed, uh, it may only have a single Tony instance. And here we want uh, two, one board uh, and the other board. Uh, so we need to, to uh, allow that uh, to have more than one instance. And then uh, the second thing to Bear in mind, we obviously select the Raspberry Pi Pico as the back end. But uh, in the board here, we actually have two uh, USB ports. Uh, so our custom MicroPython firmware has two uh, serial ports enabled. One is running on the, uh, uh, the command line REPL, which is what Tony uses. And the second one uh, is a generic serial port that we can use for communicating from the Pico back to uh, the host. Uh, I'll talk about that uh, another time. Uh, we have built into the firmware 
uh, a reliable transport protocol over USB serial that we can use then uh, to control these, uh, these boards uh, from a host PC. So if I leave that there. So if I just reset this um, instance, uh, we can see here, this is telling us this is the uh, CanPico build firmware and it's the uh, 1.15 version of MicroPython um, that it's, uh, it's built from. Now, if we use my, the Tony IDE, we can actually open files and store them uh, on the Raspberry Pi Pico. So here is a file that, uh, again, this file comes from um, uh, our GitHub repository and you can drop it in uh, using Tony. And uh, it just has some very simple uh, example code uh, that just sets stuff up to reduce typing um, when you're playing. So for example, there's a, an identify uh, function we can call up here that flashes the LED. So if you've got multiple boards, uh, running, you can see which board is which. It's quite easy to get, get them all mixed up. Uh, and there are some other functions uh, in here. One of them that's very, very useful is a function called mon, which just uh, spins in a loop, receiving uh, CAN frames through the uh, API, and then just printing them out. So it's the simplest uh, CAN bus monitor uh, in the world. So let's have a look at uh, the CAN API. Okay, so let us bring in uh, the example file. Above, that brings in a bunch of uh, definitions for us and saves us uh, all our typing. And we create an instance of a CAN controller. And then we just create an instance of our Pico library and we say to use the can controller and we'll do the same on the other side like so now we are ready to create some can frames and to send them on the can bus so let's create a can frame can frame that's five bytes long and has a hex um, ASCII hex equivalent of the payload hello and in fact if we do this we can see it's back into ASCII text right let's create another one Now we are ready to send a couple of frames on the CAN bus. So one of the easiest ways to uh, do this is to use the uh, is to use the Pythonic form of asking for two variables. So we're ready to pick those up. So if we send the frames. Now they've gone on the CAN bus. Now they're sitting here in the receive buffer. So if we pick them up, there is hello, and there is world. And that is how we send frames uh, on the CAN bus with CAN Pico. So uh, let's have a look at uh, the logic analyzer uh, feature of the CAN Pico board. And let's install the logic analyzer uh, protocol decoder. And we tell it that the uh, line coming in uh, for the CAN RX is the CAN RX line. 
there's a few things we need to get right. Uh, for example, setting up a pre-trigger capture, a buffer, otherwise the decoder doesn't know where to start the CAN frame received from. Um, and we only want um, half a millisecond of uh, sample time. Uh, so if we arm the logic analyzer, send the hello frame. Here's the CAN frame signal on the CAN transceiver. And if we go in and show it as ASCII, there is our hello world frame. Okay, that's the end of our um, intro tour to the CAN Pico. Um, there's lots and lots of uh, other features uh, we're going to look at in the future. Um, but for now, thanks for watching.